Welcome to our recorded Mass at All Saints Parish. Assisting us this morning are Emma Jean Couture as our lector. Mike Wathen is our cameraman. Assisted by Jefferson Clark. And uh, Tom Bogachutz is keeping an eye on everything. Thank you all for your service to us today. We're celebrating the 29th Sunday of the year. And we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, the Lord speaks to us about prayer today in the scriptures. Let's take a moment to think about how we pray, whether we pray, how often we pray, and whether God hears us. Lord God, you know how often you hear from us. Sometimes we just forget to pray. Sometimes we get discouraged because we don't think you're listening, and so we give up. And sometimes we do okay, and so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve you with sincere hearts through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first reading today is taken from the book of Exodus. And if you have your Bible handy, we're looking at the book of Exodus, chapter 17, beginning with verse 8. Book of Exodus, chapter 17, verse 8. And in this story, Moses is leading his people from slavery in Egypt on to the promised land. And in their journey, they come to the territory of Amalek. And the Amaleks, the Amalekites see them and they get disturbed. They're afraid. And they think that the Israelites, these runaway slaves, may cause them problems. And besides that, they will have their flocks eat from the same turf that their flocks eat, and there may not be enough. And so they decide to attack. A reading from the book of Exodus. Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some men for us and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill, whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. Prevailed, But Moses' hands grew weary. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the sun set. And Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the sword. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven heaven and and earth. earth. 
I lift up my eyes toward the mountains. Whence shall help come to me? My help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May he not suffer your foot to slip. May he slumber not who guards you. Indeed, he neither slumbers nor sleeps, the guardian of Israel. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord is your guardian. The Lord is your shade. He is beside you at your right hand. The sun shall not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord will guard you from all evil. He will guard your life. The Lord will guard your coming and your going, both now and forever. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from who you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. The word of the Lord. The next reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, beginning with verse 1. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verse 1. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told the disciples a parable <clears throat> about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. <clears throat> he said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for any human being. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while the judge refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for any human being, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, God will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, 
will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. So, Jesus is telling us about how to pray always and not to lose heart. He uses this parable of this widow woman and the judge. And you know that in Jesus' time, a widow, unless she had a man to speak for her, like an elder son, she had no power whatsoever, none. The judge had all the power in the situation. And this judge was particularly vicious because he neither feared God nor any human being. And so when they had this little contest to see if he would grant her justice and he kept saying, no, go away, we find that Probably all the men of the community were gathered around watching and laughing and carrying on and having a great time, while the women, of course, were home cleaning house and cooking and taking care of the kids. That's how it was in those days. So the men were watching this contest between this widow woman and the judge. And this widow woman was very sassy. She was spunky. She she let him have it. She spoke right up. She wasn't supposed to do that. It wasn't part of her culture, but she did because, well, Jesus was, was making an example of her, of how to get what's coming and probably saying that women have rights here. And finally, the judge gave in and gave her justice. So what's that saying to us? Is it saying that we should pray over and over and over again? Should we nag God? I guess if you're, if you're a nagging kind of person and like to nag, well, God's not going to mind. But it's not going to do a lot of good, I don't think. Should we just have hundreds of holy hours, hundreds of rosaries? Well, probably won't hurt, but probably won't do a lot of good. God will answer us in God's good time. So, what do we do with all this? I think that um, our prayer with God is kind of like a, just a conversation between a parent and a child, and we are the children. Hopefully, as we grow older, we grow up some. But you know how it is as a parent. If you've been a parent, you know that you know things, you see things differently than your children do. And you know what's best for them usually. And they think they know what's best. So we have this little contest going on to see who's going to win. And sometimes the kids do. And sometimes the parents have to say no. Or later. Or wait. Or whatever. So it's that kind of dialogue. We need to speak to God continually throughout the day. Tell Him what's on our mind. And then we need to be silent. And we need to listen. And God doesn't speak to us very clearly sometimes. I don't think He probably talked to Jesus very clearly. I may be wrong. We'll have to ask Him when we get there. But I think he talked to Jesus pretty much like he talks to us. And usually I don't <clears throat> excuse me. Usually I don't know that God's been speaking to me until I look back over a number of weeks, months, years sometimes and say, "Oh, God has been working." I see now through the rearview mirror God's work comes into focus. And I see how he's been forming me, helping me, supporting me how he got me through that impossible situation. And as we do this more and more, we catch him a little bit closer to the act. 
So I think it's a constant dialogue with God. And God will, God knows what's best for us, like our parents do, did. And God's going to work this out. And we don't understand it now, necessarily. We will only understand it when we see God face to face. And he'll say, or we'll say, what was going on back there? And we'll say, he'll say to us, here's what happened. Here's how I worked this out. Here's how I formed your situation. Here's how I formed your life. Now, kids often go through a time when they need to break away from parents, gain some independence, fight for independence, break away, and sometimes we do that with God. But hopefully we come back and reestablish a dialogue, a conversation of speaking, listening, and silence. So let's just take a few moments now as our meditation today to talk to God in our own words and take some time to be silent and listen to God, at least as a sign that in the future you are open to hear God whenever God may choose to speak. We believe that God always hears when we pray. Let's profess that faith together using the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Increase our faith, Lord God, to trust that our prayers are being heard and to see your active presence in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. When doubt fills our soul, send us the grace that bolsters our courage, that bolsters our courage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Free us from the apathy and our powerlessness over the problems of the world. Grant us hope to act with the confidence that is born by faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Help your church to accompany those existing on the margins of society and offer compassion to ease their suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the success of our CPC efforts and that our generosity will bless our parish and diocese with the resources needed for good ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those carrying the burden of illness, send them healing and lift them in spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have passed on from this life, especially Bernice Darnell, give them peace and joy in your heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And now let us pray for justice. Grant us, us Lord, Lord God, God, a vision, vision of your, of your world, world as your as love you would have it, a, a world, world where, where the weak, weak are, protected are protected and none go hungry or poor, poor. A, a world where, where the riches, riches of creation, creation are shared, are shared and, and everyone, everyone can enjoy, can them. enjoy them. A world, a world where, where different, different races, races and cultures, and cultures live, live in harmony and mutual respect. respect. A, a world, world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love. Give us the inspiration, the inspiration and courage to build it, to build it. through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Grant us, Lord, a sincere respect for your gifts that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For out of compassion for our waywardness, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember Ber Bernice Darnell and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now let's offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lord, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
And now let us pray for the people of Ukraine. God of love, our world is wrought with war and violence. As brother turns on brother, and the innocent awake to gunfire and bombs. May your compassion and healing move hearts and bring a new day to Ukraine. Fortify your children to resist aggression and instead become instruments of peace. We ask this in the name of the one who is the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.